Welcome back, everybody, to the Intel Extreme Masters. I am Katowice Qualifiers. We are here for the Korean Qualifier and quite excited for this. We have lots of cool games coming your way. Our next one is going to be Sulky versus Emotion. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a good one. Looking forward to this. Looking for, always look forward to Sulky games. Yeah, likewise. I am a big, big fan of Sulky. Arguably, for me, best player in the world. He's pretty awesome. And, well, this is the round of 64 uh, between these guys uh, to see who advances on. So not too many rounds for these guys technically left. Of course, it's only one player advancing on to the World Championship. But it, for me, if it was Sulky, I'd be pretty darn happy. Yes, Sulky is pretty good. Emotion um, is a Samsung player, plays in Pro League. He's hasn't, he hasn't done the best of results this season. I think he's got one win, two losses, or something like that. One win, two losses, one win, three losses. Um, he's played against Flash, I think he played against. Uh, I think I remember that game. He lost against Flash. Mm -hmm. But Sulky is the... Rest in peace, World Cyber Games 2013 champion. He was also, of course, the World Championship Series Season 1 champion as well, where he beat Innovation with that rivalry they had uh, the, the, towards the early stages of 2013. But now, if you don't know, Emotion Protoss, so Solky is going up against a Protoss player here. Zerg versus Protoss. And Solky is really good because he can actually, one of the reasons why he's really good is he can play any style yep. on any map. So I'm interested to see what he's going to play against Protoss because in Korea right now, there's been a quite a heavy shift towards Swarm Hosts. And I wonder if Solky's going to play that today. I mean, you could have quite easily just said, Solky, he's very good, and then just stopped there. I mean, yeah, that's, I that's, that's pretty much what you can hardly have to say about Solky. But you're right. Let's jump into game number one here first, uh, as we have, spawning up to the top left, Mr. Solky. And down to the right, we have Emotion. Uh, but as I was saying, you are right in terms of what we've been seeing from uh, Korean Zergs, which is that uh, shift over to Swarm Hosts. Mm. So... Uh, can you elaborate just a little bit on how that goes? Because we see Swarm Host being incorporated in, but then from there they also add on things like Broodlords and stuff as well. Yeah, the, the thing is, is uh, for anybody that's been watching the devil in the Europe scene, that's Stefano. Um, the Koreans have started guy. to copy his style a little bit now. As they started to run into problems. The funny thing is, is Stefano like was doing this a long, long time ago. Yeah. Uh, as he kind of predicted this, he just realized that this composition was very strong and started using it a long, long time ago. Uh, but what's happened recently is Protoss players have been really winning a lot of games and, in, and Zerg have been finding it difficult to build the right army to beat them. So they said, all right, time to use Swarmos, time to go over to what isn't as fun to use. So we actually do see uh, Swarmos incorporated into a lot of games recently. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it here too. And noticeably now, Miss, uh, Daedalus Point has been updated. So we have a smaller ramp here to make it a bit easier for Protoss to wall on. Uh, and just in general, that uh, we saw a huge outcry from Protoss saying, change this, change it, and uh, it's here now. So uh, Protoss feel a bit more comfortable here on Daedalus Point. Yeah, much easier to, to wall off this one. It's about the same size as uh, maybe Aklon Wastes. Yeah, so yeah. it does require two pylons, obviously, not just one. Uh, but it is definitely much, much easier to wall off with. But Emotion, as you can see, has decided to go Gateway Expand anyway, which is great against what Sulky's done, which is Scout, um, seeing the Gateway Expand, had plans to go Hatchery first anyway, uh, and then has gone Extract to Spawn and Pull. This is like the second greediest build you can do. The, th the number one would have been three Hatcheries, then Gas and Spawn and Pull. Or maybe this is like third, because you can go three Hatcheries, then Spawn and Pull. Mm -hmm. You can go three Hatcheries, Extract to Spawn and Pull. Well, this is two hatcheries, extractor, then spawn and pull. So a pretty, pretty good build from Sulky. Um, we're going to have to see what Emotion wants to do from here. Will he go for standard three gate aggression is the big question. Uh, we have Pylon at the back here for Emotion, so we may even see a fourth gate go down once he's expanded later on. Uh, there are still a lot of options available to the Protoss from this point on. I feel that Protoss mm. nowadays, it's, I feel it's the most versatile race in terms of the aggression they can put on, the later game compositions. A lot, a lot of compositions yeah. are viable. Well, one thing that does kind of push him into one direction is the double guesses have been taken. Um, he's got two probes in each of the assimilators, which would lead us to believe that this is most likely going to be a tech-oriented build, not so much a gateway-heavy one, because he's mining too yeah. much gas to be super aggressive. And that's what Sulky's looking at again, to see if he's actually gone in with all three probes, if he uh, has gone out with some. And of course, there's no Stalker out at all. 
which means he can easily go and hide still with this Overlord. But I'd say that the most likelihood from this is probably just going to be Stargate. And in general, like, the Overlord positionings and placements here for Sulky, very good, very nicely timed, spotting the natural going down at the right time, spotting everything that's going on in the main right now, very, very um, on point here for Sulky. But Emotion, what are we going to see? We're going to see extra gateways. Is he going to add on the Stargate in the wall? There we go. Yeah, Stargate gateway pylon. So this is two gateways and a Stargate overall which is pretty solid. We used to see three gateways in the wall, so you could hide the Stargate, but there's no really need to hide it. Yeah. You can still get damage done with it. You still control the game with the Phoenixes, so you cut out 150 minerals for uh, not hiding information. It's really good. Yep. It's fine. And just in general, this is, you know, uh, during the last qualifier from the Korean realm, we saw people like Classic doing this a lot. Just, you know, still adding on the Stargate at the front. I don't really care if you spot it. Uh, I'm just going to play out a solid, solid game from that point on. Uh, and I really do like to see this yeah. from Protoss players. I mean, even if you hide the Stargate, the first Phoenix you're going to build is going to go kill an Overlord anyway, <laughs> yeah. and then a second Overlord. <laughs> so, is you know, Ooh. what are you really hiding at the end? The Oracle has been built, which has been spotted here from this Overlord. Nice spot there. Sometimes you can get caught off guard uh, with that Oracle. Obviously, an Oracle can just dive in and kill up to eight workers if there's only one Queen around, so... Sulky will have to prepare for that not to take too much damage, so spore crawls will be needed to be put down. Yeah, keeping a good eye on things, and uh, and those spores are now on the way. So how many queens do we have in total? Just the three across these bases, but void rays start right after this. Does it, is this geared towards a quick third? Yep. All right. Well, it's going to try and go and take that with that little probe heading on down there. Oracle, trying to put on some harassment. Gets a queen, <laughs> and then maybe one or two drones. <laughs> yeah, it's got... One drone, one queen. But that's okay. That's better than eight drones, for example. But yeah, as you said, this is geared towards the third base. Um, the forge is down nice and early, so that will be able to build a cannon on the third. Nice, nice and early here. And so he kind of needs to know what's going on. He actually has two links, and he's the third. Great. Ta -da. So, and he sees the void raid too, so he knows exactly what he's playing up against here. Pretty fast third. Now, how does he approach this? He's already got double evolution chamber down, and by the looks of it, this is a new style also that's been used quite often in Korea alongside Swarmos. It's been kind of coming back into play style again. Is heavy zerglings? Yeah, and melee upgrades as well to transition on. I really do like this, especially if he can tr if he can punish the third base. But I think it's going to be difficult. How many? Vo well, we only have the one void round. Where did it go? It's in the main as well, so. And the Oracle's still trying to be a bit pesky, but it's not getting any kills yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, there's a nice wall around the cannon. There's Photon Overcharge. Yeah. It's really difficult to, let's say, punish this per se, because for all that Sulky knows, there could be a bunch of, you know, Zealots and Sentries coming down to help protect it too. So he won't really try to punish it, I don't think. He'll just look to take a fourth base soon. And is in soon in the next 30-odd seconds. All right. Well, really, really strong, nice defensive play here by Emotion so far. But at the same time, Sulky's playing out like he knows everything that his opponent's doing on every turn he, you know his scouting's been on point as well so uh both of these players uh know everything about one another right now uh so we're just going to see this game transition on but the one big scary thing on this map for me uh, as a protoss player whenever i play it is eventually transitioning across the map with a big army because if sulky wants to if he gets a wrap around if he gets a good engagement it can be scary well the gateway counts kind of high it's at six and blink is being researched so by the looks of it here we could see a movement out with plus two attack and blink and if we see more gateways come down which by the looks of it we might see the robo here uh being added on still could mean that he moves out with plus two uh, definitely with chronoboost going into the forge would indicate he was pushing towards that Robo, of course, here can be for uh, observers to join this army. Could also mean that he'll want to attack up to Colossus afterwards, but I think there would be an opportunity here to do some damage with plus two attack and a bunch of units. And we have the Solution of Phoenix just being sent out here to have a little bit of a look around. He spots the infestation pit as quickly as he would like to, yeah. and one one's about to finish. So I won't be surprised if 2 2 starts instantly, and then once that infestation pit gets up and going, whoa, he is actually going straight into Hydras, though, so. This is, uh, this is cool, a little bit of Ling Hydra play, but he doesn't have range for those, so he has to be careful. Uh, range upgrades, even, I should say. So he starts those right now. Huh. Yeah, this is definitely uh, not exactly what Emotion is expecting. Yeah. He's seen the Hydralis then, but isn't sure if his opponent's going to heavily use this. But the thing is, Emotion's thrown down these four extra gateways, and it is, lo it is looking like he's going to move out with uh, plus two attack soon. But if he just runs into a, a layer army, 
then he is going to be in a bit of trouble here if he just moves out into this. Yeah. Uh, the warp prism is being made as well. And this is a strong army that Sorky has created. And as I say, that middle map on this on, on this particular map, it, it can be difficult to traverse here for Protoss, so he has to be careful. Sorky's going to try and keep tabs on where his opponent's moving very quickly. He's got an Overseer in the middle, having a look around his opponent's base. If he sees those extra gateways at the third, it's going to tip him off. And this Hallucinated Phoenix did spot that base down to the bottom left as well, so he also knows a good deal about his opponent. Well, the Hallucinated Phoenix see no hive, so really looking to hit with an attack here. You'd usually be expected to hit a hive at this point if you're playing against double upgraded Zerglings continuously, but... Ooh, I'm not so sure this is the most amazing push in here by Sulky. Yeah. That's a lot of firepower that Emotion has. The Photon Overcharge helps out as well. Yeah, he's got to be careful. He's got to lose some units there. Not the best attack there from Sulky. Still is very strong at this point. But more so, I reckon Emotion's probably going to move away from this soon. Here's this, uh, the Locust upgrade for the Swarmos coming in. Uh -oh. But I, I reckon that we should see Emotion switch away from this army composition. I'm not too sure this is going to be as successful as he wants it to be. This is a very strong army that Sulky has. Blink Stalkers with plus two. If Emotion controls pr uh, so precisely, then maybe he can do some damage. But if the Concave for Sulky, if he sets it up right, should be fine as well. And also, you can't r effectively force field in this area. He has a lot available to him, so maybe if he wiggled on through towards that ramp, but in open area, that's going to be difficult. As he no does time push warps as well, remember? Oh, you're right. No time warps at all. So not too bad force fields, actually. Do catch a lot of that off as he is on this right-hand side next to this gorge. Uh, and he continues to throw them on down, but it's going to be down to the blink in its entirety. And in motion, this isn't going to work. The, the Hydralists and Roaches, there's quite a lot of them left remaining. Yeah, it's just a great army that Sulky has against any push out here. And I was surprised that Emotion tried to go for it. I guess he did invest a lot into this, and all his, you know, 50 minutes worth of this game was thrown into this tech, so maybe he had to go for it anyway. But Sulky was ready and just absolutely smashed that. That was very easy from Sulky to defend against. Yeah, still quite a few Blink Stalkers left remaining, so they're going to try and control against this as best they can. But army supplies 113 to 50. Those Roaches and Hydralists just turn and go for the fight instantly. They don't care. And even Transfuse is hitting a lot of these Roaches as well from the two Queens that have reinforced the Sulky. So a brilliant, brilliant move on forwards here. Emotion absolutely gets bulldozed. And Sulky sits 100 supply up. GG. Yeah. Just uh, domination there, really, by Sulky. And the thing is, when you spot double evolution chambers as a Protoss player, and you see the 1-1 upgrades on the links, you're usually expecting um, to you know, go into 2-2 two -two Zerglings, go up to the Ultras, because yeah. that is kind of common at the moment. So you can hit a timing with plus two attack with a, uh, against Zerglings, maybe Infestors, but that wasn't really what he was expected to come up against. Could he switch tech? Maybe, but then he would you know, really fall behind because it would take a long time to switch tech. And he seemed just to go for it anyway. And as we can see, it didn't work out. No, it did not. And uh, now we're going to be getting on to game number two in just a little bit here between Sulky and Emotion. If you could invite me back to the chat channel, because uh, I had to relog, that would be fantastic. And then I can join off you as well into game number two. So again, this isn't the round of 64 here between Sulky and Emotion. All of these players looking for that one spot at the Intel Extreme Masters or World Championship in Katowice. And what a tournament it is going to be. A yeah. 100,000 winner takes all. I looked on the Liquipedia thing before, and it's like you look at the prize breakdown, pull breakdown, and normally you don't see something like 100K, 0, 0, 0, 0. <laughs> it's kind of weird to look at, but. That's how it happens. It's a one-time thing, and it's going to be damn exciting. It is going to be good. And which single player from roughly 150 that signed up today is going to actually make it to Poland to play in that tournament? It's going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely wild. Um, so, I mean, Solky, definitely a great contender to win the entire qualifier today. He's one of the best Zergs in the world um, at this point, if not the best. So we'll see how well he's going to do here. Going into game number two against Emotion, it is going to be in Yonsu. This is a more difficult map. It's a much smaller two-player map um, compared to the uh, other maps in the map pool. So definitely an opportunity for Emotion to do well. But, uh, I mean, he's playing against Sulky at the end of the day. He is. Uh, do you want to throw me an invite again? Uh, oh, I've tried to join a few again, so hopefully that will work. Uh, so... Just trying to get into this game. There we go. Uh, for Yonsu, GLGL to these guys. And Sulky now stands one game up here. So, curious to see. There were some other cool matches going on in the round of 64. Stuff like um, 
what do we have? We had Maru vs. Paralyze, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Parting has advanced on past Dream into the round of 32. Mm -hmm. uh, and I 100% guarantee, after seeing Parting's tweets and you know talking to him about it, yeah. that he wants to be at Karavinsa. He's also a contender for this qualifier. Yeah. I, I know Marine King's playing in this qualifier too, yeah. under the name Protoss Imba in the brackets. Oh, that was Marine King. Okay. That is Marine King. So Marine King's also in this qualifier, so a lot of big names showing up today. But as mentioned, only one player is going to walk away with this qualification spot. Very brutal format, but yeah. is the World Championship not brutal in the first place? It seems it is. All right, let's get into our second game, as we have now. Spawning up to the top right-hand corner. Currently one game up. In the blue, it is Sulky. And down to the bottom left, we have our red Protoss. Looked all right in the start of game number one, but he needs to tie it up now. It is Emotion who's changing up his strategy completely from game one to game two. With the pylon down on the low ground here, he will be looking to either cannon rush or just go for the Nexus first. Yeah. Um, obviously could go forge and Nexus, just fast expand overall. Um, Sulky did go for a drone scout and hatchery first, so forge early is less likely. And there is that drone scout. We'll see the probe. And seeing the probe so early on, you know that the probe's just gone after building that pylon. So he knows that this is most likely going to be a Nexus down pretty early. But with the probe here, he actually returns with the drone. That's smart. Hmm. He knows that this is, yeah. knows, kind of knows what it's going to be. So yeah, there's no reason. Drone need. scout. That's nice. And Sulky's so just going to play this out very calmly. Keep an eye on the probe, make sure he's okay against that, and uh, you know, throw the spawning pool down. Any With that probe over there now, any hatchery attempt would be pretty crazy. Um, would get blocked off, etc. In motion, he's just going to head on down here with his probe. It's a little bit early, actually, um, for that Nexus, but you'll get that on them in a second. Yeah, just a little bit of wasted time there. Two drones come down. One's not good enough, usually, to fight off the probe. No, no. And good control so far there by Sulky as well to push that away as quickly as possible. Yeah. And even Sulky knows without seeing this is Nexus first. If it wasn't Nexus first, then there would have been a pylon dropped. Yeah. So he sees the timing of the forge and knows everything that's going on fully. So this is a much older style coming out from Emotion here. And it even gets the second pylon before the gateway here, wow. notice. Um, so what we're expecting from Sulky, definitely, is no gases to be taken until... The six minute mark, a long time actually, three and a half, well, two and a half minutes from now. Uh, and on the other side of things, the most likely pay play from Emotion is still Stargate, but definitely could be an Immortal push. But it's nothing so fast. I doubt it would be Gateway Aggression. And Sulky will just need to find out which one of those tech choices it will be. And that tech choice usually comes down about... Uh, you can send in the overlord at like 5 minutes 45 seconds and usually get into spot exactly what it's going to be. So I expect these timings to be hit quite nicely from Sulky. His first scout at that that time I just mentioned, and then of course the gases just after. Yeah, I mean, uh, especially on a map like Yonsu, you have to be so careful about that aggression that could come along. Uh, as for now, Emotion has just set himself up quite nicely um, with that more, you know, as you mentioned, older school uh, play style here. And mm. build, but other than that, Cybernetic Skull gets added on, and that third hatchery uh, was easily taken by Sulky. So, really, no hindrance to our Zerg player right now. Yeah, and Sulky's decided to break down the rocks. He doesn't need the Lings out on the Zelnaga Towers, out looking for probes, because you know that, as mentioned, it's probably going to be Stargate or Robotics Facility, which isn't super early aggression, which means he can use these four Zerglings instead of scouting to break down the rocks, which allows the pathway to connect the main, the natural, and the third to be one just straight line, which makes it a lot easier to defend, to get drones over there, and just makes your life easier overall. And the probe was out up to the top left, but uh, it was really just getting full confirmation uh, that that third was still going and uh, all is good. And we have creep even being spreaded here by Sulky as well. So normally, uh, you know, against something like a Stargate opening, it would be always nice to, mm. on this map, connect your main and natural with creep, because it can take a while. So um, look at this now, though, that we actually had the 5.45 minute mark, but no tech has been thrown down yet. We have plus one starting instead of tech as the overlords move away. Hmm. 
We have the gases hit down at six minutes exactly, but we also have a probe moving out. With a pile onto the top, top left of Emotions base, this looks like he will be going for a gateway. Okay, I was going to say, the probe looked like it was in a position to build a pylon and obviously throw some gateways down in the next couple of seconds here, but the third Nexus comes in. So very greedy play here from yeah. Emotion. This is all off one gateway. Sulky's looking to find out what it is. He knows there's no gases on the natural. He goes with Novolod in the main base and then also sends a Zergling to the third. Beautiful play from Sulky. Identifies exactly what he's playing against and throws down a Roach Warren immediately. This time, unlike the previous game, he's not just going to let his opponent get away with this. He is going to put pressure on. He's got Zergling speed being made. He's going to pump out a lot of Overlords and he's just going to go heavy Zergling Roach because the goal for Sulky in this game, I will destroy that third. Yeah. And he is really going to dedicate to this. And considering he just scouted out a good portion of his opponent's main, uh, and he hasn't really seen a whole lot of the natural, he just sees the gases being added on now. He knows that his opponent really doesn't have that much production uh, to actually deny this aggression. So this could get very, very sketchy here for Emotion. Yeah, beautiful saturation for Sulky as well. Fully saturated to the main base. One gas on the natural, and then the rest is just going to be full units. Ten roaches. It's going to be backed up by Zerglings behind it. I, I really think this is going to be hard to hold on against for Emotion. The rocks are going to buy him a little bit of time. Unfortunately, an overcharge yeah. will activate that third as well eventually, but speed's on the way. There's so many roaches and links being produced. This is going to be difficult. He just now finishes these four gate three extra gateways. If they did not finish in time, yeah. then it would have been... There's a Twilight Council for Blink and plus two. Um, I mean, this is something Naniwa's done a little bit here in the past in, in his history, and he's managed to hold off against this aggression. But this time, I'm not too sure how well this will go. We see a lot of units, but also double evolution chamber and drones. So it's not like a super duper oh. commitment to all these units. Nice buying time here from Emotion as the Lynx and Roaches were trying to go around this bottom side. But in the, in the end, now they have to go back to these rocks. If he holds this third, he will find himself in a beautiful position to yeah. pull off a plus two attack with Blink. At, uh, just a timing against his opponent. But is he going to be able to hold off still? Still a lot of units. Sentries need to get over here or something odd to buy time, but they're not gonna. They're actually still positioned here. The Circling's managed to get up in men. Do they get the surround on these sentries? They get quite a few of them. Beautiful. Very, very well done. Meanwhile, the Roach is going towards the third base. There's a few more cannons being added on for emotion. He knows he's in trouble. Well, look at this smart from Sulky. He's just gonna go to the natural. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. He's like, all right, well, my opponent's gonna defend heavily <laughs> on the third. I'll just go to the natural. Maybe he'll force the photon overcharge down here and then go to the third. There is that photon overcharge. Meanwhile, the next photon overcharge is only 10 seconds away, so the Mothership Core could go back there and add it on to the third as well. There are three cannons, though, but still not many units. Dark Shrine being thrown in emergency Dark Shrine mm -hmm. here. And still more Lings actually pressuring on forwards. Those two cannons at the back, they're not really walled in by too much, so those Lings could do something. But all the while, the Roach is just taking free damage and they have to run away. Sulky's got to be careful. He doesn't want to just sit back now because the Dark Shrine coming in, which he does yeah. not know about, there's a pylon at the north of that third base which will warp in the DTs, and he can actually kill the third. If he warps in three DTs with the gas he has and just goes instantly for the third base and kills it, then all of a sudden, Sulky finds himself on two bases compared to three of his opponent. But overall, Emotion defended, but he did take sacrifices to defend the sentries. And here's the big DT warp in. Five Dark Templar! Whoa. Three to the third, and then uh, the other two to each mineral line, I suppose. Uh-oh. This is a big move from Emotion, and Sulky has no idea. Yeah, there's one Overseer at his natural, but that's about it. He needs to come back with every single unit. The Overseer uh, wow. in his main is heading in, but... Too uh, late. Yeah, way too late. The third hatchery is going to die. Drones are going to die in the main. That's just a beautiful move from Emotion. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, the... Uh, DT's do get cleaned up at the natural, but the third base does fall. So very, very well done. Meanwhile, Sulky now scrambling for some kind of position here. I mean, he's getting Pathogen Glance out and as well as the Hive, but look how well Emotion is so beautifully set up. Yeah, Emotion now finds himself in the position as described earlier, where he can go for a big two base attack. He's got a lot of gateways, he's got immortals, he's got stalkers. He's just in a wonderful position. He's seen his opponent trying to go up to Hive, so he knows that obviously Sulky is trying to go for something which he doesn't have right now. Just an opportunity to tie this series up. And he absolutely will not want to miss this one. Yeah, really well played out game number two. Just the way he was defending these the three bases across the two choke points. A utilization of the rocks as well. Really well played out. And uh, now Sulky 
As we said before, a little bit of scrambling. He's adding on the gas guys as it is fourth base, trying to get some uh, sense of tech up. If he can get a lot of investors out, then maybe, but that's going to be difficult. Thanks, Take, for the uh, update winner of this versus Innovation. Would be nice to keep watching these players. Yes, it would. Thanks, Take. All right. Here comes the attack. Can Sulky hold off versus this? Infestor's obviously going to help out a, a lot, but he's hurting. He's bleeding. An emotion. Is he going to be able to seal the deal here? Mm -hmm. Well, emotion's pushing on forwards. Plus two with Blink is a very scary thing to go up against as a Zerg. And, you know, these supply counts aren't really the best uh, of times here for Sulky. Normally, you would like to be a bit higher up. He's trying to get Adrenal Glands out for these Zerglings as well, but how well is that going to work against Critical Mass Blink Stalkers? Oh, there's the Fungal. Oh. Where's the Force Fields? Very nice Fungal indeed. Actually, if he continues to chain that, there's a few sentries at the front there, but they do throw down their Force Fields eventually. This is actually a pretty good concave for Sulky, but at the same time, a lot of firepower here for Emotion, as he just continues to blink back, and yeah. it's it's just so one-sided. That Immortal is the sickest kill stealer yeah he is it's sitting at the back there with seven kills <laughs> and it's just last hitting every single unit in a really short space of time as well six seven kills that was pretty impressive uh but there you go aggressive blink on emotion knows he's got this in the bag but actually all the drones coming from all <laughs> either side but again Slash so much dance, firepower dance do a dance dance i would if i was emotion this yeah? is a great victory <laughs> Rub it in his face. Yeah, pretty good, actually. That immortal hero. He's still dancing. He's dancing, man. He's dancing up and down. With the warp prism, it takes two to tango. That were mortal and warp prism. They are buddies for life. 11 kills no! there. No! No! Don't My die. best friend. Ah, oh, GG! <laughs> and the motion picks up game number two. Nice. That was a good, good build, good strategy, good execution. Good job. Well done, emotion. Thumbs up from the caster's desk. And now we have game at number three on the way in just a little bit. Yes. Awesome. And as Take said, the winner will go and play Innovation, apparently. So that will be sick. Yeah, I'm going to have a look at the bracket. Yeah, um, let's do it. To have a look to see if anything else has happened. Unfortunately, Demag has been knocked out. We can have a yeah. look at the bracket. You can hide the first two rounds as well. So if you just click on the... Oh. If you click on the hide under... Oh, 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 too much. Click show all now. It's... <laughs> sick. All right, cool. Do you want to show it on the screen as well? That'd be awesome. All right, let's show it on screen, uh, the bracket here, and have a little bit of a look down, see what's yeah, going on. Pushing his way through. All right, so this is a run of uh, 128, but also around 64 in there too. This is the bracket so far. It's looking pretty good. We have MKP going up against Yongwa. That's pretty nice. Well, Effort making his way through, that's good. Innovation going up against the winner of this. Innovation's soul key potential. Parting, just smashing his way through. Any of the big names all the way through. True is still going up against Flash. Must be a long series, that one. Row Row Traps, a great one. Rain Myungsik, that's another great series. Whew. <laughs> Some good stuff, man. Some good stuff. Some good games there, everyone. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to see some of these great games as the bracket continues on. But uh, that means with the round of 64, there's at least four to five more rounds yep. of games. So lots of games to come as we get closer and closer to find out just the one slot available. We do. It's, uh, wait, I'm answering a question in here. I'm like, ah, it's still early, guys. Uh, actually, you know, it's like 11 a.m. now. Uh, so we're getting on. We are pressing on. We've got an invite now to Frost, our third map here between Sulky and Emotion. And then, as they pointed out, they believe the winner will play Innovation. So yes, this is true. That's so cool. Uh, if we see Sulky versus Innovation in the round of 32, oh boy, my head's going to explode. It's so much fun casting these Korean qualifiers. <laughs> I say Korean qualifiers, it's like Asian and Oceana, but let's be fair, let's be honest. It's probably going to be a Korean getting out. All right, so we have the go-go, and we'll be following the winner on from this, I assume. Yes, most likely, yeah. You want to do the, that, right? Yeah, with Innovation coming yeah. up next, why not? That sounds really good. All righty. Awesome. So the countdown's begun, guys. Game number three here uh, for these qualifiers. Again, I have to reiterate, one player out of all of these guys goes on to the World Championship. Yeah. So brutal format, both here and at that tournament. But whatever. Let's do it. It's good. It's fun.
It's it's still telling me to take a break. Is it? Because I've really? been on StarCraft for two hours and eight minutes. Oh, two hours and eight minutes now. Jeez. It's telling me to take a break. You machine you. I know. <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> All right, let's get into our next game. As we have spawning down to the bottom right-hand corner, our blue Zerg. It is Sulky. And up to the top right, we have our red Protoss. It's Emotion. Pulled off a great... Uh, Great strategy in that last one. Only just, though. Mm. I think if Solki... I mean, Solki didn't think that he would get major results from his aggression. So I actually went back to drones quite early and the double evolution chamber, which set him up really nicely with the damage he did get, which was like the five centuries and you know, just picking off a pile on hero there. But I think if he dedicated, he probably could have picked up the win because of that mistake from Emotion. But because he didn't dedicate to it and Emotion was able to sit on those three bases... He was able to... Well, I guess it was just the DT move. It wasn't... I think they were kind of equal. Yeah, the DT move was good. Uh, yeah, I mean, Sulky did a, did enough damage with so little units that it equalized the game. But then the DT move was just... Yeah. Just I mean, hit him with a surprise. I imagine if he had the income and the lava from that expansion when that attack hit. Oh, it was over. Yeah, that would have Definitely, been. definitely would have been over. Like, this wouldn't have been as successful. Yeah. All right, well. But also, if Sulky hadn't had done the damage to those sentries and slowed down emotion in the first place, then that attack would have worked. So, lots of different ways to look at it. Lots of small little things can derail a player quite easily. And we have the double gas again coming out. So, this is the gateway double gas build um, from emotion, which leads to believe that it would be a um, Stargate play again. Are Interesting drone position. Look at this, Sulky. Yeah. Uh, I mean,. I was going to say, if he waits there long enough, then he would see, but it's too long to wait to actually throw down the hatchery here. Yeah, this was what I was speculating to in my mind as well. I'm like, is he actually going to go for that triple hatch? And it looks, it no. looks like no, oh. but it was it was odd. Yeah, but a good build anyway from Sulky. This is my preferred build too in every matchup usually. I mean, not every matchup. Well, actually, almost every matchup. Yeah. Zerg versus Zerg, not as much. But against Terran, this is good. Against Protoss, this is good. Just a very good all-round build because you do have a good economy from the early two bases. But then you also have the Zergling speed to help protect against any aggression earlier on. It is a good build. Um, and Sulky goes into the main base and just sees exactly what he saw in game number one, which is the double gas, the gateway. And, you know, if patterns and if history repeats itself, it would be Stargate play after the Nexus is down. Yeah. And I think that, you know, Sulky on this map, more so than uh, especially Yontu, is going to feel a bit more comfortable uh, to play his own game out because there did seem like a bit of an air of, uh, you know, mm. irritation there uh, in game number two from Sulky. But, I mean, this is, this is Frost, man. This is a whole different kettle of fish. This is a big, big map. Imagine if Emotion went for a Stalker instead of Sentry. He'd be able to deny scouting a lot more. That's true. And a lot easier with that uh, Stalker. And he could change it up. He could do something a little bit insane. But then again, he could just go for the Sentry, which is kind of normal when you go for the double gases like this. Well, look at that Stargate immediately, actually, before the Sentry. Oh, so a faster Stargate than the last game, because he got the Sentry first. So fast Oracle and if he Stargate wants to go for And the Stargate was on the natural. Yeah, that's what, it le that's what this should be. Yeah. A uh, fast Oracle. Because you don't really... I mean, the differences of building finishes now to then just a few seconds later isn't that huge. Okay, so... Oh, he could have actually blocked that for a second there, especially with the lings that have already moved out into the middle. But uh, does... Well, actually, I wonder if he... Did he see the drone? All right, whatever. Uh, <laughs> the point is now that the lings are just going to poke on forward here. See a gateway. Probably see a second gateway get thrown down. But there is a slight delay on those from this. Hmm. Where is this probe going? He's going up to the top left. Oh, it's Phoenix. Left. Didn't expect a Phoenix to come out here. Oh, wow. That's very quick, Phoenix. Especially with a full Corona boost into them as well. Like, um, uh, this could... Uh, I mean, we were speculating Oracle, and that gets over there at a time that maybe he didn't really anticipate, and then he doesn't have the spores there to deal with it, etc. if that was going to be the case. But Queens would have had to shoot it away. So far, pretty normal from Sulky, though, as well. He's He's got his Roach one because he isn't exactly sure what's coming. He's seen the Phoenix now, but this could still be um, a Phoenix, especially because there's a probe still out. This could be Phoenix with Zealots um, towards his third. So Roach Warren down nice and early, nice and safe. Remember, this is the last game of this best of three. No safe... Oh, I mean, all safety caps on for this one. No risk going to be taken. All right, and that pylon does finish up on the left-hand side. So... There's Emotion. only two... Oh, okay, there's a third Phoenix. Never mind. Does he get... Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, and the Phoenix are going to head over to the third as well, so... Ooh, that Ling. 
Uh, oh, actually, he's going to spot. He oh, spots the lucky, Whopping. man. Wow. Lucky Sulky. Melee builds 14 lings. Um, if if that hadn't have been spotted and then it was like six zealots, nine zealots, then charge to the third, we uh. could have seen the third been picked off. But that's a big, big scout from Sulky. I mean, technically, the, the, the lings were rallied up there to eventually spot the pylon, but just a great, great awareness there by Sulky. Even the lings, they go up and they're going to kill actually this pylon before the next warp in because he just warped yeah, in and this, wait. These zealots are not worth it at all. Yeah. He kills the Ooh. pro. Builds another pylon, but with roaches coming out, six roaches, there's no way this can work. Very, very difficult position here as Emotion loses his first pylon, second one's on the way. It is a bit easier to defend for these zealots as they try and press onto that third base. Maybe the Phoenix will be able to help out as well, but again, just too many roaches. He's got the roaches there. This isn't yeah. going to work. And already the forge is thrown down. I'm sure the gases will come into play again soon as well. I'd be surprised if he dedicated more zealots to this. It, it seems like it's a waste. He warped in a sentry and zealot at home. The gases are going to be taken. He shouldn't warp in anymore here. This is defended already. As soon as it got spotted, it was defended. Well, for now, emotion. I mean, is he going to try and poke, or is he just going to recall everything out? I think, you know, you can't be too wasteful with these units. Although, just then, emotion did see those zerglings at the front of his base. So, but the roaches are already there. Look, they just walk on forwards. Time warp or something, anything. Ah. Oh, we'll start to pick him up. That's not too bad here from Emotion so far, but he was supply block there for a second. There is the time where Lings are coming in now as well. Zuglingeru. Sulky is going to, well, shut that down. Bye-bye. Quite easily. Quite easily. And now just is droning up quite heavily. Is it a good economy? The robotics facility of all things. Wow. Didn't expect the robotics facility to come here. Someone actually asked me the other day when I was streaming, saying, are there any builds? I think the question was, are there any builds against Zerg as a Protoss player that involves a robotics facility which isn't all in? <laughs> and my, my answer was like, no, not really. No. <laughs> because you just died a Mulesk. As soon as it spotted, yeah. you died a Mulesk because you need to Stargate up and running. So he's actually going wow. up to the robotics play. Obviously, if he had gone for like an immortal push, it's so, so slow. But if this is spotted at any point, Expect a spire and expect an instant death. Yeah. If it's spotted, which it should be with the overseer, which is going in. And I'd expect this to be hit quite hard. He can't. I wouldn't dedicate to Hydrasus at this point. I mean, yeah. I guess there is a Stargate. Then again, there is a Stargate and there are already five Phoenixes out. So it's not terrible actually now thinking about it's it. It's certainly a deterrent, right? But like, then again, I, I mean, I'm thinking like there wasn't a Stargate already. Because there are Stargate and Phoenixes, so excuse what I said a little bit. Like these three roaches makes sense, but third. not in this game. The three roaches perched above the third, just waiting for it to yeah. have a little bit of saturation. But the ship core doesn't go far enough to actually spot that. So Sorky's on top of things in terms of pre preparation for his opponent, at least. Yeah. This I guess is, this is pretty good from uh, from Sorky in this position. Yeah. I was losing it a little bit. I was going dizzy and stuff. Still a little We're all me. dizzy this early. Event. But with 10 Hydras on the way, the thing is, there's already going to be one Colossus out, right? Mm -hmm. So with one Colossus coming out and plus one attack, it's. I think it may be a bit difficult to, to use these Hydras effectively. I guess this game just goes on long again. Yeah, it definitely could be. Like, I look forward to that. Yeah. Especially with Sulky's playing. Yep, yep. Um, he's trying to push away the Phoenix, and they don't actually die yet. But Emotion's doing a good job of retaining those Phoenix for now. And it's always so important when you're going up against a Zerg in general. Don't lose one after I say that. Okay, he doesn't. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. 12 more drones. Spire on its way. Um, with 12 more drones, we could see... And the Spire play coming in, we could see the plus one attack on a Corruptor move. Like a Hydro Corruptor. Could do. I'd like that. It's protecting the Spire with the, all the overlords. Oh wow, the Zealot managed to spot the uh, three roaches up to the top here, but uh, still hasn't lost still the Phoenix. Still getting a couple of kills. Oh, cheeky little guys, run away. Yeah. Okay. They escape after that Void Ray says, go away. Uh, and the Infestation Pit got added on as well for Sulky here, so... Yeah, Hive or um, Swarm Hosts? I'm going to go with Swarm Hosts, I think. I'm not sure. His fourth base is really hard to protect. I think True. if it was Swarm Host, it would have been the other one. I'm expecting Hive, actually. Yeah? Yeah, I think if it was Swarm Host, I think he would have played this differently with where, his expansions. Where does he go from Hive, though? Just up to Vipers, I suppose. Yeah. Like a, a Hydra Corruptor attack into a, a, a Hive after. That'd be nice. I'm not sure Swarm Host would work as well. It's going to be very difficult to defend that left base if he uses Swarm Hosts. And did the fourth base get spotted at all? No, it hasn't just yet. He's protecting it really heavily with static defenses. Three extra spines go down there, so 
And a ton of roaches in production here for Sulky. Um, I don't think any pressure he can put on is really going to work out with these Colossi already out. Well, here comes a Corruptor attack, which we were all expecting anyway. Um, it's nine Corruptors versus two Colossus. A third one about to pop out, yeah. protected by two Void Rays and five Phoenix. He's going to have the Stalkers with Blink as well, but they need to position themselves really well. Yeah, there's a few Stalkers, so ideally just needs to... He's going to try Swarm Host, though, so you were right. I think it's going to be hard to pull that off, though, eventually. But we'll see how this attack's going to work out. With the Corruptors, if they're able to bring down the Colossus, but there's three of them, and I think there's enough protection. With only nine Corruptors here, Colaris. Mm. And it's a pretty it's pretty heavy in terms of Roach compositions here. Whoa, for an Overcharge really, really early. He's scared. He knows this is coming. Yeah, And does. it is scary. It is. See the rocks? Oh, he doesn't actually see his opponent positioning on these rocks. And he allows him to get up the ramp so easily. Uh, he's got to be careful. He has to be very, very careful. Those Corruptors now fly forwards here. Focus down one of those Colossi. Corrupt the other two, and they bring those down pretty quickly. One of them is going to end up falling. Actually, he micros it back pretty nicely there as well. The Force Fields don't do too badly for Emotion, but he's lost all of his AoE damage. Yeah, he has. And he's going to lose... Sulky's going to lose quite a few units on retreat here. That was a nice defense. Nice. The Very 12 well Swarm Host coming into play next. Here comes the next wave. I and mean, obviously that's going to stop a counterattack. I mean, he's only got Stalkers and Void Rays at this point. But he doesn't even know that it is going to be Swarm Host. So this isn't going to be as easy as Emotion may be thinking it is at this point. He'll yeah. need to go up to Colossus and Void Ray production again. But he only has one Robo, one Stargate. Ah, don't fly that way, Phoenix. Uh, the Scruptors. Does he see this? Okay, so he's a Swarm Host, which yeah. is nice. What's his reaction to the Swarm Host, though? Uh, still Void Ray, Void Ray production. Eye. Yeah, well, he needs both of those, but yeah. he may need them in higher numbers. So he may, may see more Stargates or another Robo. And at least he spotted the base down to this bottom left. The Queen is attacking the hatchery for now, but we'll leave that and uh, uh, have a little bit of a look at the Swarm Hosts, see what's going on here. As they're going to move into Assault mode in a second. And, well, this is going to buy a huge amount of time for Sulky, and Emotion's just going to have to play this out mm. vastly economically. Yeah, he's going to play very defensively, taking a fourth. He's got a Dark Shrine in. He's going to focus on um, the Warp Prism on the yep. right-hand side here. He can warp in Zealots. Um, I'd like to see Zealot Charge Research soon as well. It would help out a lot. He's trying to get past. So has been spotted by two Corruptors as well. If he can get uh. some units in there, but there's still a lot of Lings and Roaches left. Oh, it's going to die before they warp in. Yeah. Nicely done. But this will be, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing more than just that one more prism throughout this game if he's going to attempt to play against Swarm Hosts. Yeah, you're right. You absolutely have to. Um, you know, even just if he snuck a probe down to the bottom left and actually threw like a pylon down somewhere there, yeah, that might that be okay. that fourth base isn't going to be easy to defend. That's yeah. for sure. That's one of the weaknesses here. All right, and the Locust still pressing in towards that fourth base, but Sulky, all he has to do is, you know, bring Queens with him, get that creep going, uh, constantly push on forwards to that fourth base, and it's going to put a timer on emotion. Uh, regardless of what he wants to do. Um, and right now, it's just focusing on the standard Protoss comp. Loses a Stalker. But that was about it. But for Locust, that's a nice trade. Two Roaches at that north again. It's pretty nice. Always up there. Oh, wow. Uh, one kill, two kills between them. So 11 kills in total. And the Locusts continue to... Will they get a Stalker? He blinks it back. Sick. All right, okay. So he doesn't lose a Stalker that time. Great Aspire coming in. Void rates are going to be very important here. I really think that more Stargates would be nice. Next, I mean, I please. guess he's got a lot of Blink Stalkers. Ooh. I mean, the army for Emotion just in general is pretty strong. He pushed those Swarm Hosts away from Assault Mode, so yeah, that was uh, that's good. Where are these Hydralisks going? Yeah, there's, there's no Spores or Spines to help protect them, I suppose, right? Yeah. In the middle, they're just kind of naked. Maybe that can be an addition from Sulky. Uh, but overall... I think Stargates are going to be important here, especially with the, uh, I don't know, oh, look at this, Sulky's actually broken that fourth. Yeah, and That's those links surprising. are actually, uh, with these Locusts as well, they could kill off this fourth and just retreat on out of there. Uh, you'd lose a few links, of course, but who really cares in the grand scheme of things? Even the Contaminate as well. Nice, nice. Bye-bye. That's nice, picking off the fourth. Yeah. And he's got Spores and Spines actually in the middle. That's going to protect his... Um, Swarm host a lot. Ooh, nifty, nifty. Uh, where are the Dark Templars? And where was that warp prism? Uh, it's in the army. Okay, so it's not doing anything just yet. But he needs to, he needs to make that work. He needs to get get going. But this is a really strong army still from Emotion. Mm, but nine Broodlords now too, which uh -oh. means he'd have to blink, and then he'd have to blink into the Swarm host links and spines. 
Bit of a weakness on this right-hand side, no spines or spores. It's almost Broodlord. It's the scariest thing I can imagine in my nightmares. Uh, but here we go. Uh, well, I guess uh, Emotion has to set himself up really, really well to deal with this. Uh, did he see Broodlord yet? I don't think he has. Maybe not. Ah, I lose the mothership core. Yeah, I mean, he's got units to deal with them, but it's the stalkers that are going to have to deal with them, not the air. Yeah. But then again, you've got the swarm hosts, and there's a lot of them as well, 12 or so. Two Dark Templars on the left-hand side of this map, but meanwhile, the Broodlords and the Locusts now all push in. The Corruptors trying to focus down these Void Rays, realizing that's the big point of contention. If he can so kill off those queens. Void Rays, he should be okay. And this is looking a little bit bad for him. He had to blink forwards into the Broodlords. Yes, he's getting a lot of the kills, but the Locusts from the ground decide... Well, not and your 70 day. 70 lings to back this up to. Oh, jeez. That Looks trade like Sulky just... has an army that is better than the motions now. He's got roaches up the high ground again. And they've got <laughs> 10, 12 probes each. Wow. The fourth base was picked off earlier, which means that motion doesn't have the best economy. And Sulky is starting to run away with this. What a sick game. is just starving out your opponent here with, the, especially... Again, the MVP Roaches just always up on that high ground. Really uh, nice little small plays here by Sulky add up to the bigger victory. And now this fourth base, good luck emotion. I don't think you're going to be able to hold that for long. Yeah, he just doesn't have enough uh, units here. Doesn't have enough economy. Another Stargate and Fleet Beacon coming in. Trying to go up towards Void Ray Tempest, a bit of a mix of both, but that's not going to work out. War Prism even escapes into the main base, and this time... It has Ooh. Dark Templar, and with a single spore here, this is a nice move. Ah, uh, there's, I think there's a second spore under those overlords. Oh. But um, either way, it's going to get picked off really yeah. fast. And the thing is, is that even with that, he hasn't had enough time to defend. If Sulky just picks off that fourth, and then returns, actually he's going to return back. Oh no, he's going to get it. Well, all the army here for Emotion also moving uh, into a bit of an uh, aggressive position as well over at this natural, but realistically, I'm not sure what these uh, stalkers can do now that they've used Bling. They have to position themselves on that ramp to try and bottle up a lot of these lings, but uh, it's going to be a sad, sad story for them in just a second. Uh, did he ever get adrenal glands? I don't think he did. No. No? Okay. Well... Regardless, another base goes up from the left-hand side here for Sulky. He still pressures onto the fourth base, even though it's dead. And now Emotion is in a bit of a sorry state. Yes, he did get a lot of his opponent's tech, which is nice. And he's getting t uh, Tempest sound. But he's got no money. Yeah, no money. He's not rich. He's a poor pro gamer. He is. He needs Twitch donations and subscribers. And most people arg would argue that most Protoss aren't that uh, poor at the moment. But well, Emotion is. Emotion is, poor Because guy. he's not going to be able to play in that $100,000 winner-takes-all tournament. He's not hero. He's not Sam. Sulky looks like he's going to move on, and that means we would be in the next round having Sulky versus Innovation. Uh-oh. The rivalry of 2013, or one of the big rivalries of 2013. Guys. Up there with the likes of Jadong Naniwa. Yeah. Go tell your friends, guys. Sulky versus Innovation next. I. Yeah, this is a game where... Emotion obviously has the tools to win, but doesn't have the money to use the tools. Because yeah. tools are expensive. Tools aren't quite expensive, yeah. And he's not going to be able to use them properly. Nope, those locusts just poke on in. Any kill that they can get is a win. And um, they get two zealots, not too bad. Another base is going to go over to the left here for Emotion. But in the grand scheme of things, I think that the pressure that we're going to be seeing here from Mr. Sulky is going to be far too much for Emotion to handle. Well, yeah. He's going to be full of emotions after this one because he is not going further in this tournament. As Sulky is here to stay. Sulky, one of the best Zergs out there. Looking to move on. Can he beat Innovation? Nope. How's Innovation's form? That's a good point. He beat Nurture earlier on, but he was playing from Europe. <laughs> all the corruptions on all the things as this army is going to get laid to waste. There you go. GG. Sulky advances on. And now we have, in the round of 32, Sulky versus Innovation. Oh, in the brilliant. round of 32 as well, it kind of shows you how difficult this tournament really is. That is the final of, well, let's say it, WCS Season 1, twice. <laughs> awesome. Awesome stuff. All right, so I think we're probably going to go to a short break. Yeah. And then when we're back, guys, go and tell your friends on Twitter, all the Twitterverses, as well as Facebook. As we have Innovation versus Sulky next up here at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship Qualifiers.